All right, all right. So this video is going to be <laughs> a pretty different format than um, the way I've put together my other vlogs, simply because I've been in uh, Puerto Escondido for the last almost 10 days at this point. And a lot of what I've been doing is going to the beach, um, you know, swimming in the ocean, um, walking around, going to different beaches, and all sorts of water activities. And because I'm by myself, it doesn't really make sense for me to walk around with a camera because anytime I would want to go for a swim or, you know, to set my stuff down and, you know, just walk around, I would be running a really high risk of um, just having everything stolen. So I, I just haven't been filming as much as I would have liked to. Um, but I just took a moment and I jotted down um, just some of the, I guess, kind of fun, quirky, um, notable events that have <laughs> happened while I've been here. So right now I'm on my way to uh, a place of Puerto Escondido called El Centro. Um, and just for context, Puerto Escondido is broken up into a few main areas. Uh, El Centro is kind of the, well, center, it's by the airport. Um, it's more of the local area with a lot of uh, more like formal, I don't know, businesses and restaurants. And um, it's a bit, I guess, farther away from the main beaches. Um, but that's one area, it's called El Centro. And then there's an area called Zicatella, which is sort of in the center of Puerto Escondido. Maybe I'll pull a map up and you guys can, um, you know, see it as I'm talking through. But Zicatella is known for two things. Um, it's got a beach where professional surfers from all around the world will come and compete at. And then it also has um, just a strip of tons of, you know, beach clubs and bars and, you know, good restaurants but that is basically just a party hot spot. And then right now, and where I've spent the most of my time, I'm in La Punta. Um, so it's um, basically where all the backpackers and uh, the majority of travelers will go and uh, hang out. There's a lot of Airbnbs here. There's a lot of um, more like, like funky, quirky, hole in the wall restaurants, as well as a lot of nicer uh, restaurants, cafes, ice cream places, just a good blend of, you know, everything you can look for. There's also a really nice beach. Um, it's much more friendly for beginner surfers and um, also just a lot more of a friendly beach to go surf at. If you're in Zicatella, the waves are really aggressive. And right now there's a phenomenon called Mar de Fondo, I believe I'm saying it correctly. Um, and I wouldn't know exactly how to explain it, but essentially it's a, um, a temporary like seasonal phenomenon that's causing the waves um, in all of Puerto Escondido, but particularly uh, Zicatella, to be really big and the uh, tides to be really dangerous. So I spent a couple days in Zicatella Beach um, at a hostel there called Selena, which is a chain hostel that I've stayed at before that I really like. But, you know, with a context of Zicatella having really dangerous breaks unless you're a pro surfer and there being not that much to do other than go to these like beach clubs I changed pretty quickly as soon as I um, had the opportunity to and to move over here to La Punta um, but anyways <laughs> right now um, I am in uh, I mean not a bit of a pickle but I do just kind of have to make a big effort to go all the way to El Centro. It's about 40 minutes away if I, 40 minutes to an hour if I walked, um, but I'm gonna take a Colectivo. And the reason is because I need to go get cash out of an ATM. Uh, La Punta and Zicatella have ATMs, but very few. And for whatever reason, they're almost always either out of cash or broken. And earlier today, I walked to the two in La Punta that I know of and uh, one is at a hostel called Che, which is a really fun hostel. Um, I haven't stayed there, but I've met a bunch of friends that are staying at um, Che, and again, another chain that does everything they do really well. The uh, buildings are awesome, the facilities are awesome, the amenities are great, the activities you can do are good. Um, they have an ATM, 
and it was working, but they don't accept like foreign cards. So basically it only works if you're like traveling from elsewhere in Mexico and you're banking with a Mexican bank. So I gave that a try. There's another hotel, maybe 10 minutes in the other direction that um, you have the option to <laughs> uh, withdraw cash from an ATM, but they were out of money. So that was no go. So right now, my best bet is just to go to the Centro uh, to a grocery store where there's a lot of ATMs um, that I used once when I first got here to just get a starting amount of cash. Um, and the reason I need cash, I know this is uh, quite the ramble, but um, the reason I need cash right now is because I had a bit of a fiasco with figuring out where to stay. Um, and I had this uh, really funny story that I'll get into, but it required me to um, just pay, pay all in cash for the room that I'm at right now. And I had enough when I first checked in for the first night, but for the next few days, um, I need to go get more cash. They don't take cards. So yeah, I'm walking to the main road, um, like the main highway, I guess. I'm on the main road right now in La Punta. But yeah, so I've got, I don't know, 10 minutes till I get to the main road. I'm gonna get in a Collectivo, which is like a shared taxi for 12 pesos uh, per ride. Um, so I'm just gonna, yeah, walk and talk and <laughs> share some of these stories. I've got uh, some of the notes on my phone. So I guess just starting from the top, um, this might be all of them, it might not be. Um, and they're in no particular order, just kind of in, <laughs> in the order that I remembered them and jotted them down. But one of the uh, <laughs> fun activities um, when I was at Selena in Zicatella was a group of people that worked at the hostels. They have um, motors, motorcycles or mopeds. It's one of the big ways people get around here. Um, you can rent them. It's like ATVs, these motos. And um, at night, they offered to have a group of the people that I met there go to a more secluded beach called uh, Playa Carrizalillo. <laughs> um, we all hopped on the back of their scooters and I was riding with this girl and we got halfway to the beach. And by the way, we were like kind of the back of the crowd. We left um, just behind everyone and we weren't super far away from everyone, but <laughs> we're halfway um, on our way to the uh, um, beach Playa Carrizalillo and <laughs> The scooter uh, rumbles to a stop. <laughs> We're in the middle of the intersection and uh, she makes the comment and in Spanish that, uh-oh, we're out of gas. So <laughs> I thought she was joking, um, but no, like the scooter just completely stopped and we had to hop off, um, push the scooter to the side of the road and everyone else had uh, had kept going because we were last and we couldn't really, you know, yell or tell everyone to stop. And uh, she didn't have her phone on her because she'd given it to one of her friends up ahead um, that had like a little purse um, to keep it. And <laughs> we ended up uh, we ended up having to hitchhike maybe five minutes uh, to get some gas, um, and then we had to walk the gas back to the to the scooter, fill it up. Um, before we were able to um, <laughs> make it to the beach. So that was just like one of my first nights here. I um, made a good group of friends from the hostel and then some of the people that were working at the hostel that uh, I don't think they all live in Puerto Escondido. They live around Mexico, but they're, they're like, hey, we want to go to the beach. Do you guys want to come? And we said, yeah. So um, yeah, that was pretty fun. And then the second part of that story is on the way back, I was riding with a guy. Um, I got on his uh, motorcycle because it was a little bit more suited for, I guess, my weight and his weight combination. Um, and <laughs> while, we were <laughs> while we were driving back, kind of same thing. We were in the, we were in the middle of the pack and um, everyone went on the main road we were following along and all of a sudden, instead of turning onto the main highway, I guess, not the main road, he turns onto this really dark side street. And I wasn't too sure what was going on. 
but I knew generally it was still kind of the same direction. Oh, <laughs> what's up, dude? <laughs> How are you doing? How's it going? Good. Nice seeing you. Nice seeing you as well. See ya. <laughs> um, but <laughs> yeah, he turned on, and that was uh, that was this guy Paco actually that I um, met out at a restaurant the other night. Um, he's from Mexico City. I think he's a consultant for Boston Consulting Group, and he's doing a project on uh, trying to transform uh, one of Heineken's beer brands, Dosa Keys, into a premium beer. Total tangent, but back to the story. I'm riding on this guy's motorcycle, and <laughs> we're just supposed to be going back to the hostel. All of a sudden, he turns off into this really dark, dimly lit street, and maybe I don't know, 500 yards, just far enough where we're like really down the street. Um, it's completely dark. Uh, he pulls up next to this group of like, in my mind, very sketchy guys and doesn't even say anything to me. He just stops the motorcycle, gets off, <laughs> takes some money out of his pocket, buys something, um, super quick transaction. And then just gets back on the motorcycle and uh, we keep driving like nothing happened. <laughs> so um, not sure exactly what I saw. I'm gonna leave it to your imagination what you think that was. I know what I think it was, <laughs> um, but I didn't question it. I was like, okay, this is, uh, this is pretty awkward. Um, but yeah, so in the same night, <laughs> ran out of gas hitchhiked to a gas station, refilled our gas. We went to a beach called Playa Carrozilio, which during the day is super, super um, busy, super packed. Um, but at night it was completely empty. It's like a really beautiful beach. The waves are much calmer at night. We splashed around, we all went swimming. Um, and yeah, it was really fun. Um, and then later in the night, I'm pretty sure I witnessed a drug deal. So that was, uh, <laughs> I guess, um, yeah, that was one of the things that I felt was worth sharing, but not caught on camera. Um, what else? Let's see. I think maybe a few of you guys have already heard this story. I might have just texted you guys, but um, again, at Selena, I um, woke up early one morning and I went out to actually let me backtrack. So. Staying at Selena, the first few nights, great. Um, for context, I was in a dorm room with eight people in total. So myself and seven other people. That means there's eight beds. Um, for the format, they're like all open air bunk. Sometimes you get capsules that are, um, you know, giving you a little bit of privacy, but this hostel kind of open air, one shared bathroom, you get lockers, but you know, it's pretty open and for the first few nights, everything was good, right? I met people that um, were really fun. They're from all over the world. Canada, Australia, France, Mexico. Uh, off the top of my head, that's what I can remember. Maybe a couple other places. No, it was good. Um, but maybe two or three nights go by and three of the guys leave and nobody else checked in later in the day. So the rest of us just thought, oh, we've got um, you know, a slightly less crowded room at least for a night, great. We go to sleep. <laughs> um, all of a sudden, the lights turn on. So I'm thinking, wow, you know, it's at least seven. Um, somebody's up doing the thing, like pretty reasonable. But no, it's four in the morning, three thirty-four in the morning, and these three like forty-year-old Mexican dudes are just belligerently drunk. Um, <laughs> belligerently drunk. They turn the lights on. Start. I don't know if they're fighting amongst each other or just talking extremely loudly, but belligerently drunk, turning the lights on, yelling, falling into the bunk beds. Basically, they wake everybody up. And, you know, of course, nobody wants to be rude, and it's not really smart to, you know, get in somebody's face that's drunk with a group of other drunk people. Um, so everyone kind of just calmly you know, looked around, not sure what was going on. Didn't really say a whole lot. Finally, one guy just said, hey, you know, we're trying to sleep. If you guys wouldn't mind turning the lights off and just 
just quieting down a little bit, that'd be great. Um, so two of the guys helped their most drunk friend into the top bunk where he passed out and proceeded to snore incredibly loudly all night. And then the other two guys um, left and that was it for the night. So I was pretty you know, thrown off by that. That was probably one of the more, um, probably one of the worst hostel experiences I've had with, well, as far as being with just people that were sharing the room that were just pretty disrespectful and not very kind. But I didn't really think that much of it. You know, in the morning I woke up around 7.38. I went to the beach, um, I went for a walk, and I brought my phone with me, I brought my um, wallet with me, and I brought my AirPods with me just so I could listen to music and, you know, not, having, not have it play out loud and bother people. Um, <laughs> but on my way uh, out to the beach that morning, I noticed that one of the guys from the uh, room that I was in that came in super drunk late at night was just passed out by the pool, not even in one of the pool chairs, just like laying by the pool, all of his clothes on, like a pair of, a pair of pants, um, a polo shirt on, just completely passed out drunk, just snoring. And I thought, well, you know, as uncomfortable as that looks, at least he didn't do it in the room and at least he left and, you know, finally, finally gave everyone some peace and quiet. So, I'm gonna cross the road really quickly here. Um, so, you know, again, didn't think too much of it, but <laughs> um, I proceed to spend a little bit of time, you know, on the beach. I come back, I spend some time on the pool, and, uh, and uh, I eventually decide I want to go back to the room, you know, be in the AC for a little bit, put some more sunscreen on. Um, and then go out and do whatever else I'm going to do that day. I get back to the... Oh, and this is a Collectivo that I'm going to try and get on. Um, maybe it'll stop for me. Oh, uh, maybe not. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's not even full. Huh, maybe it's not even full there. But anyways, I'm going to keep walking. Um, but yeah, anyway, so I go back to the room and it's maybe at 11 at this point. So a lot later on in the day. And I, um, you know, I'm just laying in bed. I've got my AirPods in. I'm just kind of relaxing. And at a certain point, I need to go to the bathroom. So um, normally I'm really pretty cautious with my stuff. But again, for context, I was by myself in the room. There's no one else there. So I take my uh, AirPods out of my ears. I put them in my case and I just plug my case into the charging cable on my bed, right? Thinking I'm just going to go to the bathroom. I'll be a couple minutes. I'll come back. All's good, right? So I go to the bathroom and while I'm using the bathroom, I hear the door to our room unlock. I hear someone come in and then maybe 30 seconds later, I hear someone leave. So I didn't think anything of it, you know, somebody, it's a shared room, there's seven other people. People come and go all the time. So I get out of the bathroom and I go to <laughs> go to put my headphones back in and they're gone. So <laughs> all of a sudden I realized the person that I didn't see and I have no clue, you know, who it was of the seven people um, came in probably didn't think there was anyone else in the room because I was being pretty quiet. I wasn't being loud. I wasn't being noisy. And in hindsight, very opportunistically thought, oh, like AirPods are something very small, very concealable and hard to identify um, with the exception of, you know, they're linked to my uh, Apple account and they have a special inscription uh, peener because <laughs> somebody, you know, who got me them as a gift. Um, so I for sure would be able to identify them both with like my Apple location and the inscription on the front of the case. But <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, like I just got these stolen. So um, I do a quick like run around the hostel just to see if I can recognize anyone from the room to start asking. Um, I don't see anyone. So I pull up my Find My app and I have all my devices linked so I can track, you know, everything that I have. And I, <laughs> I look 
and I see my AirPods moving um, down the main road, going, 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 at first at the speed that you could do on foot. And I'm like, man, I think these are just gone. Um, there's no, I'm gonna be able to catch up with this, this person, whoever it is, and they're already 10 minutes away from me. Like, I'm just kind of SOL, so. Um, I told one of the guys in my room what happened. Um, he's from Philly, and he was like, you know what, unfortunately, they're probably just gone, so not too much you can do about it. So I kind of accept my fate throughout the day. Um, I see them go to Mizunte, which is about an hour and a half south, and I just assume somebody in the room left, they're not coming back, they checked out, they had the opportunity to pick up some headphones while they were leaving, and they took it, and you know, my fault, shouldn't have left them on the bed. <laughs> um, <laughs> later that night, just jokingly, I'm with a group of friends, that guy from Philly is working remotely, so he had been here for like three weeks already, and he'd made some other friends that have been working here uh, remotely. And we are, you know, we meet up to go play pool at one of the places across the street. Um, and I just jokingly, and you know, share that I got my AirPods stolen. And <laughs> I go to show them on the map. I was like, yeah, I thought maybe I'd have a chance if they came back. And I was just, how you doing, man? <laughs> good, good. You want to say hi? Yeah. What are your names? Cool. What do you want to tell people? <laughs> It's just, it's just a personal vlog, just for fun. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Puerto. Welcome to Puerto. Cool, cool. All right, see you, man. <laughs> um, so anyways. <laughs> anyways, uh, what was I saying? So yeah, I just go to show these guys, like, oh, look at where my AirPods are. They got stolen and somebody went to Mizunte, like, bummer. And as I pull up, find my, they're back in Selena. And I start looking around and I see the three drunk guys from the night before. For context, one of the guys is maybe not 40, maybe he's only uh, 30. If this guy doesn't, oh damn, I should have asked him for a ride. Man, if he doesn't pull out, if I could stop him, maybe I don't have to take a collectivo. <laughs> oh dang it, I missed it. Man, I should have thought to ask him, he's for sure, he's going in the right direction too. Dang it. Wow, okay, bummer. But anyways, I, uh, I see that my AirPods are in the Selena hostel and I see the three drunk guys from the night before. But one of the guys, um, in my opinion, not to, you know, profile, I think is like the most likely to be a part of a group that is not good. Um, he's like, 30, he's pretty muscular, he's covered in tattoos, he's got like pants that he wears below his waist, he's got um, piercings, and he's been just blitz drunk the entire time. It's like, I don't know, maybe 7, 30, 8, 30 at this point in time. None of them have changed their clothes the entire time, at least I saw them. Um, and they're by the pool, just completely drunk again. So I... I'm not going to confront them, I don't want to cause any problems. And they're actually still staying for another night. Um, so I came up with a plan to just go and talk to... Um, dang, I just missed another collectivo. Gotta keep walking. But uh, I came up with another plan um, to go to the front desk. And what we decided to do is do a key freeze where only my key would get access to the room and everyone else when they tried to go back to the room would realize oh my key doesn't work I need to go to the front desk and get it fixed and this is the catch on how we thought we'd find who took the airpods instead of having the host explain that somebody's airpods were stolen um, did you take them because who's going to admit to that I said ask this question when they say, hey, my key's not working, respond by saying, oh, that's too bad, let me fix it for you. And then just casually say, by the way, what'd you do today? Um, did you do anything fun, right? Something along those lines. Because only he and I knew that the AirPods went to Mizunte that day. Um, and anybody just 
in passing having a casual conversation, not knowing that they're suspect, if they went to Mizunte, they'd say, oh yeah, I just had a day trip to Mizunte. And that would be our, our uh, you know, our in for narrowing down the sus suspects and then asking the question, well, hey, like, some AirPods got stolen, we saw them go to Mizunte, right? So you get the point. So anyways, <laughs> um, I ended up, you know, continuing to go play pool with this group of buddies and I just assume this will work or it won't, but let's give it a try. We get back around 11 <laughs> and the group of guys, the older guys that, um, you know, I was kind of suspect of, were still just drinking by the pool. They hadn't left, they hadn't done anything. So I think, all right, I'm gonna go to bed. They're gonna try and get back in. I'll let the host handle it and that's gonna be that. Turns out the guys never came back to the room. Um, they had all their stuff. Um, at one point during the day, they just grabbed one bag. They had one bag for the three of them. They kept it by the pool and they just drank till they passed out. They slept by the pool, never went back to the room. Um, and that was the end of my AirPods. I checked my Find My um, later the next day. Um, I had an early dolphin watching tour that started at like 7 a.m. So I woke up pretty early. I checked my phone. They were still at the hostel. I saw the guys passed out drunk by the pool. Um, but of course, you know, I didn't want to confront them and make assumptions. So I go on the dolphin tour. I come back. Um, I refresh, find my, and the uh, AirPods are uh, by the airport. And then later in the evening, they're in Mexico City. So um, long way of saying my first experience with getting robbed um, in Mexico City, all, all in Mexico, all things considered, you know, not too bad. It wasn't like I got violently robbed. It wasn't an armed robbery. It was just an opportunistic, you know, go to the bathroom for maybe four minutes tops, come back and they're gone. So that, uh, that is the second, I guess, story I have on my notes here. Um, the other one, uh, much brighter note was dolphin watching. Um, that morning I went dolphin watching and I was super, uh, super lucky. Um, I was super unlucky and also kind of unlucky. And what I mean by that is last week was the last week to have the chance to see whales before they started migrating. And unfortunately, I didn't see any whales. I had a friend that I took the bus from Oaxaca with, um, and he is from the UK, I believe. And he went on a uh, trip the day before and he saw one whale. And I thought maybe there's a chance I'll, I'll get lucky and soon as well. I didn't see a whale, but um, our captain found us a school of maybe 300, 400 really playful dolphins. Um, just jumping out, doing flips, swimming next to the boat. We got to jump in and swim with them for a little bit. Um, so that was just like, that was just an incredible experience. Um, I could have brought this. I didn't for some reason, but I did get some clips just on my phone. So yeah, I'll play those and you guys can check it out. Um, but that was really fun. It was, I think we left at seven. I met at the uh, main beach called Playa Principal. And then we spent maybe 45 minutes going to this captain's spot and then maybe 45 minutes playing with the dolphins, cruising along, following them as they were swimming. And then we did maybe an hour of um, just getting a tour of some other, some other spots. Wow, I'm getting <laughs> really unlucky with these collectivos. I keep waving at them, but Maybe I'm not as clear as I could be just because I'm talking to you guys. Um, but anyways, um, yeah, that was a fun day. That was a fun morning. I've never seen dolphins like that. And I saw hundreds all at once. So that was really cool. Um, trying to cross the street to get over to this market here. But it's a lot of cars. But I've got this little road bump that slows them down. This one, 
this works. This is uh, the local market. Well, it's a local market, but it's kind of the tourist local market. Um, all the locals say they don't go here because it costs way more. But I just want to walk in and get some shade and maybe something to drink right now um, while I continue this story time. So yeah, um, what else? Let me check my notes, let's see. <laughs> so I kind of started this by explaining why I'm going to Centro and it's to go to an ATM to get cash. This is not the first time I've needed to go to an ATM and get cash and I haven't wanted to go all the way to Centro just to get cash. Um, so one of my strategies for getting cash <laughs> has been to go to restaurants and then offer to pay for people's meals that I'm seeing are about to pay with cash. Um, and then I just pay with my card and if they want to leave a tip, I just say, hey, whatever you're going to pay, just tell me, I'll pay it on my card, you guys just give me the cash. And I just use, you know, strangers that become friends as my ATMs. Um, but this one day, um, there was, I was in Zicatella and I uh, wanted to take a taxi because I had to move from Zicatella to La Punta. It was the last day I was there. And there had been ATMs that were, in theory, working the days before, but I still had money from the first one I used in El Centro. But I had um, like 50 pesos too few for this taxi, which I had like 100 pesos, the taxi was 150. So I needed to get cash because um, normally I would just say, hey, like, I'll take the taxi, just take me to the closest ATM and then I'll get cash and then pay you. And normally that works, like if you're in that situation, but there's, there were no functioning ATMs in La Punta and I'd asked um, my hostel like host before I left. So <laughs> I went everywhere I could think of. Um, the hostel couldn't help me. The two ATMs in Zicatella that I walked to weren't working. I tried going to a gas station and they were only taking cash um, because their credit card reader was broken, which meant I couldn't even do the let me buy something thing. So I went to this very small, uh, like family owned convenience store. And I, you know, pleaded my case. I said, if you could help me, I'd be so grateful. Um, I basically just need maybe 200 pesos to be able to catch a taxi. Could I buy something? You guys can charge me more and then um, give me the difference in cash. And the uh, family, and by the way, it's like a mother, father, and three kids all behind the counter. Um, so the mom talks to the dad and they say, yeah, sure, we'll help you. So I asked the mother, I said, what would you like? I'll buy you something, whatever you'd like. Um, and then we can do this and that'll be my way of saying thank you. And <laughs> without skipping a beat, the four-year-old kid uh, points at his mom and goes, she wants a beer. He says it in Spanish. <laughs> but <laughs> it was just the funniest thing seeing this uh, four-year-old kid just without missing a beat. I asked him Spanish, like, you know, que quieres, which is, what do you want? Um, I'll get it for you. And the kid goes, yeah, my mom, she wants a beer. <laughs> so <laughs> I like teased him. I was like, do you want one too? And the dad started laughing. Um, but that was just like a super funny moment. Uh, I ended up buying the mom a beer. And by the way, this is the uh, Zicatella market. Um, tons of outdoor restaurants, really pretty view of the beach and then tons of stalls with like anything ranging from clothes to spices to i found this really good peanut butter with um golden milk which is like a turmeric based paste and then um monk fruit which is a natural sweetener that i've just been snacking on it's in my bag but yeah anyways just some context for where i'm at um and then more stalls doesn't look like they're all open right now i ate at one of the indian restaurants here uh, two days ago. It's pretty good. Um, but anyways, yeah, that was another story was the, uh, I've got it noted down as convenience store beer for money. <laughs> um, I've done that a couple other times. I met a couple um, from, well, the guy is from Canada. The girl is actually from Mexico. They're living in Canada. And we were at this five taco for 80 peso, like super hole in the wall family taco spot the other day. And I was just like wanting to have like a pretty cheap meal. So I walked over, um, I got these tacos, and they also, you know, were eating tacos, and we started, you know, chatting. Um, and they actually gave me a lot of food tips. Some of the places I've gone to, they came basically just to do a food tour. Um, and anyways, when they, uh, when they left, they had like a 300 peso bill, so I covered it on my card, and I got cash. So I've done that a couple times. They did it one other time, not gonna 
share it because it's the exact same thing just with a different group of people um but yeah so that was i don't know that's kind of like a fun notable thing especially the the beer for cash <laughs> story that little kid just roasted his mom so hard and i just died laughing <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah that was pretty great um what else okay yeah so i'm on the beach of course um not that you've seen the beach clearly in this video so far but i'm on the beach and i'm by myself and that means two things one i'm not really bringing my camera so if i go swim then there's a chance to get stolen i of course don't want that but the other is i can put sunscreen on everywhere except for um except for my back so it's really awkward i don't like bothering people um in that context of saying like hey do you speak english or do you speak spanish and then can you put sunscreen on my back a complete stranger it's kind of like a weird thing to do and it's not something i even thought about until i had to so one day i was just walking around i had my shirt on i really didn't want to ask anyone so i was like okay you know i'll just leave my shirt on and it's not a big deal i'll just enjoy the breeze and if i go swim i'll swim with my shirt on oh well but all of a sudden this guy who's like 250 pounds just completely jacked and his girlfriend also completely jacked walk up to me um and the guy asked like what the time was and i told him and i was like okay this is my chance like he approached me i already broke the ice by telling him the time let me ask him <laughs> and I, was, I said uh, like si no quieres no necesitas which is like if you don't want to you don't have to pero but um could you please help me um, put sunscreen just on my back you know I did the top and bottom but could you help me with the center and he kind of smiled and was like okay um, you know obviously wanting to be like the nice guy in front of his girlfriend so I was like yeah like no worries I got the top and the bottom I just need the center if you could help me that'd be so amazing so he proceeds to with just like the back of his fingers like very briefly <laughs> you know kind of wipe it around I obviously can't say I don't know how good it was and um, it was maybe like 10 seconds <laughs> and he's like yeah you're all good I got I got everywhere and I could kind of feel it like moving around and I thought maybe maybe he got it so very naively <laughs> I just took my shirt off for the rest of the day and uh, by 9 o'clock that night I had one of the worst sunburns um, I've ever had and I've just yeah there was like <laughs> yeah i don't know i was just very naive about how good of a job he did it was also just so awkward because i could tell like i was like if you don't want to you don't have to but then he said yes and then he did it and then i could tell he wanted to stop um <laughs> but then i just thought he, it was like fine so i went swimming um but yeah i have a very bad well i had a very bad sunburn that was maybe two or three days ago I've been chugging water and I got some aloe and it's actually helped a lot. I thought it was going to peel and knock on what it hasn't yet. It's just turned into um, somewhat of a tan, if you could call it that. It might still peel and oh well, knock on what I hope it doesn't. But yeah, that's my uh, asking a dude who doesn't want to put sunscreen on another dude's back to put sunscreen on my back story. <laughs> and yeah, it was just so funny, like, I guess in my mind the way i saw it is it was one of the first days i um, really went to the beach um, for a long period of time so i'm pretty pasty pretty white and this dude is i'm assuming from mexico he's like 250 pounds completely jacked his girlfriend's also very athletic they're very tan clearly spend a lot of time on the beach and all the guy wanted was to know the time and what did he end up doing having to run <laughs> sunscreen on this pale pasty skinny white boy <laughs> probably in his mind against his will because he didn't want to look mean in front of his girlfriend and yeah I don't know just just kind of funny so that is another story um, that I've got a um, couple more let's see here uh, another I guess beach related thing that I've noticed is at least while I've been in La Punta. When I was in Zicatella, the only time I saw people surfing were really early in the mornings when the waves were not as aggressive um, and by, by very few people. Like I think the busiest I saw my portion of the beach um, in Zicatella was 
maybe, maybe, maybe four people, um, all very good surfers. Um, I think that both went out in groups of two for safety. And other than that, I didn't see anybody surfing um, Zikatella, but in La Punta, the complete opposite has been the case. Um, it's much more beginner friendly. So, oh, crossing the road again. It's much more beginner friendly. Um, and it's just been a nightmare. I, I do not know whether it'd be more dangerous to go deal with like the crazy big waves of Zikatella or go deal with the chaos of beginner surfers um, in La Punta for context. It's um, a break that breaks off of rocks. You have to go left. If you go even straight or right, you're surfing into some pretty sketchy rocks. And there's at any given time, like 30 to 40 people, mix of very talented surfers, as well as beginner surfers, um, simultaneously trying to fight for waves, paddle out through the break, and just, I've watched from the beach a couple times, and the beginners that don't really know how to paddle out are essentially just having their boards get launched and wrecked by waves and flipping back onto other surfers right behind them. And then there's also the people that are beginners that have finally made it past the, the break and they're going to catch a wave, but a better surfer who is sick of watching, you know, the bad surfers waste good waves decide, hey, I'm taking this one. But the beginner surfer thinks they have it, so maybe they get up, but then the better surfer takes it. So then the beginner surfer panics and falls and then falls while directing their surfboard into somebody trying to paddle out. Um, and then I've seen just a whole slew of <laughs> not so fun accidents. Um, so yeah, I went out bodyboarding one day. I just borrowed a, a boogie board and I did that in a much less crowded part of the beach. And that was really fun. I also just body surfed a couple times. Um, but the actual surfing, at least at the beaches I've seen, also when I did the dolphin, uh, dolphin watching tour, um, our boat took us to, I think I see a collective and I'm gonna try and get on it because I don't want to keep walking. But, oh. <laughs> Everybody when they see the camera just loves it. But uh, that Cleveland Collectivo stop back there. Maybe if I get to a spot where they can actually pull off the road, um, I'll have a better chance. But uh, yeah, when I was uh, dolphin watching, one of the beaches that our captain just took us by was called uh, Carrozalillo, which is also the beach I went to at night where the scoot ran out of gas and then I witnessed a drug deal. And it was even more crazy than La Punta. So the surfing situation has been weird here. Basically, what I can tell is the beginners are lucky to get a wave in a three-hour session. Um, and then just the good surfers. Or not. Uh, I keep messing these. <laughs> Dang it. Um, so, yeah, that, I think, like, my thing would, I would need to probably hire, like, a private instructor and then drive, like, an hour or 30 minutes to, like, a very secluded beach and do a full-on lesson. So, yeah. Um, anyways, oh. <laughs> what's up guys? <laughs> Everybody loves it. Everybody loves it. <laughs> um, what else? What else? What else? What else? All right. Sunscreen burn. Oh, this, this is two Airbnb stories, or I guess just accommodation stories. Um, I booked an Airbnb in La Punta. It was my first Airbnb. I've been at two now. And I ended up finding this really charming, really awesome couple, um, Misael and Grit. Um, Misael's from Mexico. He's a surfer. He has uh, a house where he and his German wife, Grit, live in the bottom with their family. Um, I'm not sure if they also live with like Misael's uh, mother, but they also have at least one or two kids. They've got chickens, cats, and dogs. Um, the place is like, very well loved and I was fortunate enough to stay in one of the units above them um, so that was really awesome and I had booked it for five nights and for whatever reason I stayed for five nights and thought you know maybe I'll just be able to extend not a big deal um, very naively I 
had heard about but didn't think about the impact of um, what Easter weekend and um, Good Friday and um, just some of the religious holidays and you know Easter weekend festivities would do in terms of Airbnbs here and when I checked literally the <laughs> night before I uh, was due to check out of my Airbnb with Misael and Grit um, everything was just like crazy pricey um, very scarce the best thing I could find for my budget <laughs> was a tent on the beach literally just a tent on the beach not even on the beach it was like just on a patch of sand in somebody's backyard for like hundred sixty dollars for two nights and then it was completely booked after that and I, I am not leaving until uh, April 4th um, and today's April, or March 30th so I was like oh my gosh it's either a tent on this patch of sand for two nights for hundred sixty dollars <laughs> or I would need it I would have needed to get like an extremely nice place and not even sorry not even that nice like the kind of funky worse than what I've been staying in places were going for like $500 a night and the nice nice places were going for like $1,500 a night so I looked 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 I looked on hostel world everything sold out I looked on Airbnb nothing really made sense to me I looked on booking.com nothing really made sense to me so in the morning I'm like scrambling at checkout at two which was a pretty generous checkout time and I thought okay maybe I just need to take a bus back to Oaxaca and <laughs> I'll take my bus back to Oaxaca there's plenty of stuff on Airbnb and Hostel World and I can just you know take a collectivo to the center um, all will be great I'll just do that and uh, you know that's just how I spend my last week I liked Oaxaca Maybe I'll even go to Mexico City. I'll take a bus or something to Mexico City, and that'll be that. Um, so that was really my plan that day. And two o'clock comes around. I go to check out, and um, I just ask uh, Misa. He likes Misa. His name is Misa. I just said, "Hey, would you happen to have any friends that have empty rooms right now? Like, I get it, super busy. Probably not, but um, do you have anyone?" And he asked Grit, um, his wife, "Hey, do we know anyone?" And, you know, she thinks for a second and goes, maybe, maybe. So she ends up calling another uh, friend of theirs that also runs a search school. His name's Noel. And I guess they've got a nice studio that they rented out in the past on Airbnb, but they had a really bad experience, so they stopped doing it. But she knew the room potential was available, and they had a shared pool. Um, so it sounded really great. But she calls, no answer. Uh, we chat for five more minutes. Misa calls one more time, no answer. And uh, he goes, Peter, you know, I gotta run, but um, here's what you should do. Just walk around and knock on doors and ask to see if anyone has a spare room because people have tons of spare rooms, but they don't always rent them. And if you just say you know uh, Misa and uh, Grit and that they, you know, will vouch for you, somebody will let you, you know, spend the night and then you can figure out your plan, right? <laughs> so I'm like, okay, you know, I'll give it a try, like, not against it. And I uh, start walking into town thinking, you know, worst case, I just need to go to a Collectivo um, to get to, um, you know, the bus stop that can take me to Oaxaca, and that's what I'll do. You wouldn't believe it. <laughs> I walk three blocks, I kid you not, three blocks, and I'm standing... Um, I'm standing by this big cactus with a gate to like another building, just looking at my phone, trying to maybe find a, ca a cafe really quickly just to do some, a little bit more last minute research. And I'm standing on the side of the road, my both backpacks on, and this random guy, he's uh, shirtless um, in a t-shirt. Sorry, he's shirtless uh, in, a, in, a swim, uh, in swim trunks and flip flops, um, working on like the back of his truck. He, uh, he just says, uh, Caballero, necesitas uh, ayuda? Which is like, hey man, you need help? Uh, and then he said, are you looking for something? Um, and I just thought, you know, normally like, normally I would just say, no, I'm good, you know, just because total stranger, who knows? Um, but I was like, yeah, you know, just out of curiosity, super random question. You wouldn't happen to know anyone that just has a spare room just for tonight, um, would you? 
and he looks at me and he goes, you see this building behind me? And he points out like this very nice building, the name's uh, Surf Travel Friends. He goes, this is, this is my house, I own this place. Let me go talk to my wife to see if we've got something. <laughs> and we go in, and he goes, I'm not sure, because uh, I don't think we've got anything, but let me just check. And he talks to his wife, and his wife you know, goes on the computer. Um, I think his wife's name is Melinda, if I'm remembering correctly. But um, he goes, or she's on, her, she's on her computer, 30 seconds go by, and she goes, Peter, you wouldn't believe this. And this is all in Spanish. Actually, no, she was talking in English and Spanish. Um, so Estino was talking in Spanish and English. But anyways, the point is, she goes, Peter, you wouldn't believe this. We were fully booked with a room that we just finished remodeling three days ago. And as soon as we listed it um, on our private website, it got booked. And then last night they were supposed to show up and it was a no-show. So this room that got finished three nights ago was booked and then for whatever reason, the family that booked it didn't show up. So she said, we've got it available. If you'd like to take a look, um, you can decide if you want it. So we go out and uh, we go up and it's like a pretty nice place. I'll, I'll play a clip of the room just so you guys can see. Like way nicer than anything I've been staying at. And she shows me the room and I kind of just thought like, oh man, like based on what I thought, saw on Airbnb, something like this is gonna be like way out of my budget. So <laughs> I was like, wow, this is beautiful. Um, do you mind if I ask like what it is per night? And she goes, oh, it's 6.50. And I'm like, yeah, no way, <laughs> not gonna do that. Um, I didn't say that, but I just said, oh, like, um, I just basically said, wow, this is so nice, but unfortunately, like, I don't think I can do it. Um, and she goes, oh, why not? And I said, well, the thing is my budget is maybe, like f right now, maybe 40 or 50, uh, 40 or 50 a night. And she goes, dollars? And I was like, yeah, 40 or 50. And she goes, oh, I was talking about pesos. $50 a night is like 850 pesos. <laughs> so I literally at 209 um, that day went from, I don't know where to sleep tonight. Maybe I just need to take a three hour bus ride to Oaxaca and just knock on like a hostel door and ask if they've got an open bed. To at 309, having the very first person I asked on the side of this, this random street that I hadn't been to before, be the owner of a building with a room that had been finished for guests three days before, booked and then canceled or no-showed, and then was available for $38 a night when everything that I was seeing on Airbnb was like, was like, a hundred like eighty dollars a night for a tent on a patch of dirt so <laughs> that's my other fun airbnb story um celestino and melinda they run a surf school um they've got a beautiful house it's in a wonderful location um, and they basically said you can you know it's uh 650 pesos a night you just have to pay cash um you don't even need to pay until you leave because you probably don't have that much cash on you um but I had enough to at least, I was like, hey, no, like, let me at least pay for the first night. I'm so grateful, like, you guys are literally saving me. <laughs> um, so I just want to make sure I go and um, I'm walking because I keep missing the collectivos to get cash. Um, but that's why I'm walking because I went from where am I going to sleep tonight to having the nicest room of my entire trip be magically available, like just materialize before my eyes. <laughs> Um, in the matter of like 20 minutes. So, yeah, uh, super lucky. Uh, I, I'll probably get a call from at least one of you asking what the hell I'm thinking, but <laughs> yep, that's the story. And what else? Um, I, I captured a little bit of this, not a ton, um, just because my battery was kind of getting low on my uh, on my camera. But the other fun thing I did was um, in the last couple of days while I've been here is I did a day tour to Mizunte. Actually, the day after I watched my AirPods go to Mizunte. And it was super fun. We went to um, this really beautiful uh, 
Like, it's not a crocodile sanctuary. They've got other animals there, but there's um, fresh water with mangroves with um, huge crocodiles, some of the biggest crocodiles I've seen in my life, just roaming wild. And then there's also a couple that are in incubation. Um, and then there were also deer there. I was able to hand feed um, some deer. There is a sole monkey that I think the guide was explaining they tried to rehabilitate, but there was something wrong with it. So they couldn't put it back out in the wild. And then they tried to give it a mate. And every time they tried it, they just didn't get along. So they've just got this really fun monkey. He's got an awesome personality, but for whatever reason, he just is probably gonna live in captivity for the rest of his life. So yeah, that was the other fun thing. We went to Mizunte. Um, we did a couple stops, we went there. We went and tried some, uh, just like Oaxaca, or Oaxacan chocolate. Oaxaca is the state, I tried Oaxacan chocolate in Oaxaca City, but um, Puerto Escondido is in the state of Oaxaca. Nice, we got a Collectivo. <laughs> cool, give me a sec, top on. Okay. All good. Thanks. All right, so we're standing in room only. Gracias. Sí. Ah, just hopped off the uh, <laughs> Colectivo. Um, had to <laughs> stop recording because I definitely needed both hands. It was standing room only and uh, there's all these speed bumps that they put to slow people down so they, you know, <laughs> are safer. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but yeah, with my sweaty hands, they only have like metal bars, like super thin metal bars. And when you hit those bumps, they slow down and then they accelerate really quickly and you get launched backwards. So for the sake of uh, not falling out of the back of a Collectivo, uh, pause the camera. But anyways, what else? Let me look at my notes. What was I saying? Oh, maybe I was talking about going to Mizunte. Yeah, we did the crocodile, super cool. Fed some deer, super cool. Um, saw a monkey that was awesome, had some really tasty food. Um, we went to, we did three other, well, we did we did quite a few other things. We did some uh, chocolate tasting. Um, we did some mezcal tasting. We went to a place that made all sorts of artisanal, um, artisanal like soaps and lotions and body products and like healing creams and remedies and um, I rubbed about 40 things <laughs> just on my arm just because you know that's what you do when you go to these places you try everything of course um, then we went to Zipolite and Playa del Amor which are famous nude beaches um, I didn't film there uh, for obvious reasons but um, I can tell you, uh, I wouldn't go back because it's the exact opposite of what you want to see <laughs> if you were to go to a nude beach. So, well, I don't know, if you were to go to a beach in general, if you go to a nude beach, clearly. But I guess I should say that it's not like, uh, it's not anything crazy. Um, our guide is explaining that they're family beaches, so you literally have, you know, a family of like six. You know, the grandparents, the, you know, mom and dad, and then their kids, you know, all at the beach, just, that's how they like to go to the beach. So, um, yeah, it's like, it's very laid back. It's not judgy. It's not anything like that. It's like any other beach, but um, at least while we were there, just basically a bunch of old dudes. 
Um, so <laughs> yeah, that's, that's all I'm going to say about that. Zipolite, um, our guide was saying most people just go to the beach regularly and maybe only 10% of people are doing the nude beach thing. And then Playa del Amor is like this much more secluded private cove. You have to walk up this staircase and down into um, the actual, you know, hidden cove parts to be able to access it. And that's more like 50-50. Um, there's a bar and a restaurant. It's not a huge beach, but we spent maybe 20 minutes there. Um, and yeah, and then we went to a place called Punta Cometa and saw the sunset. Um, which was really beautiful. Um, I didn't film it. Um, I took a, well, I filmed, I filmed a time lapse of the sunset, which I'll play for you guys. Um, but I didn't film a, a portion of um, being there where our guide is explaining the beach right below Punta Cometa is a beach that's famous for um, having a lot of, I guess, spiritual significance for being a very peaceful, um, peaceful place. The Dalai Lama, I guess, did a tour around the world um, that was planned specifically to find, I forget what the exact like criteria were, but the most peaceful, like spiritually meaningful places just in terms of the energy they emitted. Um, and Dalai Lama chose Punta Cometa um, and one of the beaches near Punta Cometa to visit. And so what a lot of people will do is they will walk from Zipolite um, in town barefoot to this beach, and then they'll swim in the water and basically ask the ocean to help cleanse them of any like weight that they're carrying in their lives. So they'll walk barefoot, they'll swim or splash water on themselves. And it's basically this um, like cleansing of, um, you know, you can walk and ask the ocean to help, uh, you know, cleanse you of anything that's going on in your life that you don't want to carry with you. And the idea is when you get out of the water, you leave it in the ocean and it's behind you. So uh, I didn't really have anything, at least in the moment, to, to leave behind, but some of the people that I was with uh, jumped in, whether they were just jumping in for fun or something else I, I don't know I didn't really ask um, but yeah that was that was the day trip to Mizunte I got back um, pretty tired and um, it was actually that night that <laughs> I had my beer for cash story happen um, yeah so right now I'm in a uh, the Centro, and I was kind of wandering aimlessly, but I'm looking for Chowdhury. I think that's how it's spelled. I actually think I've been to one of these. Well, I went to this one when I first got here, um, but I think this is the name of a grocery store that I've been to before, maybe in Isla Mujeres. Chowdhury, Puerto Escondido. I have no clue how to say that, and I'm actually close. Okay, cool. So, yeah. Um, much different style of uh, video for, I guess, what you guys have seen, but uh, yeah, just kind of walking, talking, story time. I'm going to make my way to the Chowdhury grocery store, get the cash I need to pay for the uh, wonderful, wonderful room that I just happened to find. I, like, literally my mind was blown when within three blocks of walking, I went from where am I gonna sleep tonight? To having the nicest, like most beautiful room that I've had the entire time I've been traveling, um, just fall in my lap out of the kindness of this random man. So, like if he hadn't stopped to ask, or even thought to ask like, hey, do you need anything? I wouldn't have bothered him, I wouldn't have said anything, I just would have kept walking. And I could have walked through any street, I could have chose any cactus to stop in front of, a million things could have been different. And it just so happened that I stopped in the right place at the right time and the guy was feeling just kind enough and I was feeling just brave enough to and open enough to ask for help and things just worked out beautifully. So um, that's a bit of an update for you guys. Um, I've got some footage from Oaxaca and Puebla that I need to edit to put in a vlog for you all. Um, 
I've been doing the uh, short series of like, you know, eating and tipping. And that basically takes like four to five hours a day of going out, finding a new restaurant that has a new food, um, you know, filming it and then coming back, editing it and then publishing it. So just to avoid, you know, spending all my time in my room, just, you know, on my laptop editing footage um, or have the whole thing be about, you know, just editing nonstop. Um, <laughs> I'm probably gonna do that when I am back uh, and have have uh, some free time, um, maybe in a in a week or two. But this style of video, I can probably put together pretty quickly for you guys and uh, give you a give you a pretty fun update. So yeah, I'm pretty much I believe in the grocery store. So with that, I will see you later. Back really quickly, just for another just crazy story. Um, I'm at the ATM right now, and I use uh, the Santander branch. And there was a couple there in the blue shirts and black hat over there using this ATM before me. And I was waiting, and they finished and walked away, but I didn't see them um, take out any cash. So I asked them if it was working because I thought it was a bit odd. And they said, yeah, no, it's good. Like, it's it's working. Um, so I come over, and they're literally walking away. Like, they were probably 20 feet away. And I see the ticket um, is out of the machine. So jokingly, well, not jokingly, but I just, like, said, hey, do you want your ticket? Just because that's kind of a sensitive thing. And the guy was like, oh, sure. Um, so... Um, one sec. Um, so, uh, so, um, anyways, I give him his ticket and then they leave again. They're walking away. And then all of a sudden, I see like 4,000 pesos come out of the machine. And I was like, hey man, like, I like had to yell because he was so far away at this point. Um, I had to yell saying, um, like, hey, like, your money, your money. So, um, let me just check and make sure I got all, all nine. One, two, three, four, five, okay, perfect. Um, so I had to yell and um, tell him, like, hey, <laughs> you've got to, like, it was literally like 4,000 uh, pesos just in the machine and I was like hey man like do you like your money <laughs> I walked over um, and he just had this like speechless look on his face because um, he like didn't realize what had happened and I handed him the money and he was like confused and I had to explain to him that um sorry I'm just putting my cash in my wallet right now but I basically just had to explain to him that uh, I had um, just like found his cash um, in the machine and he didn't know why the cash had come out because for whatever reason they like didn't like the conversion rate they saw. So they hit decline, but what, what, um, what that means on the machine is they're just declining that ATM's conversion but their bank will then go ahead and convert at their own rate, but it doesn't actually transfer the, it doesn't actually, sorry, cancel the transaction. So the money still came out just with their own bank's conversion rate as opposed to the ATM's conversion rate, but they thought they were canceling the transaction um, entirely. So they basically confirmed the transaction without realizing it and then left. And if I hadn't seen the ticket come out first and said something to the guy, um, they would have left and there would have just been $4,000 or 4,000 pesos, which is like $260, like a lot of money just in the machine. So I literally yelled and chased that guy down, gave them their money. We talked and like figured they were just shocked because they thought they canceled it. They didn't know why I was giving them money. I explained to them what had happened, and then they explained that they thought they canceled it, and then I actually dealt with this before, not with like accidentally 
declining and walking away, but I just knew that when you declined, you weren't declining the transaction, you were just declining the um, ATM's preferred conversion rate, which is normally bad because it's how they make money, but the cash still comes out. So I told them that and their jaws just dropped because it was literally like a lot of money that they basically were just gonna leave without, um, not knowing <laughs> that they just paid and had money just left in the ATM. So, super crazy, but um, I feel like this is just a great example of what goes around comes around. I got so lucky um, with my, <laughs> with finding this random dude on the street that was kind enough to, um, you know, host me um, with this room that just magically is available. And then I do this just random day to come to this ATM and I show up at the exact right time to, give this guy um, and his wife their money that they literally just were about to leave without thinking that they hadn't gotten it. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Um, there, I, I mean, obviously I wasn't recording it, but their faces were just speechless, and the guy gave me this big hug, and the wife just thanked me like a million times. Um, so, yeah. Very, very funny. Um, very crazy. But that is it, yeah. So <laughs> if anything else crazy, crazy happens, I'll turn this back on. But yeah, maybe that's it for, <laughs> maybe that's it for today. So I'll see you guys uh, in the next one. That's me. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> What do you know? 30 seconds later, I go down the escalator. And I think, oh, let me get, let me get this cool shot where I, my uh, my camera is magnetic on the bottom. So I was like, oh, I'll clip, I'll magnetize the uh, bottom of the camera to the uh, bottom of the the escalator, and then just walk in front of it and get a cool shot. And the, you know, complete opposite of the good good natured people thing just happens. A dude gets on on it behind me, and I guess he didn't see me put it down but I turned around and he's picking it up off of the uh, ground with his backpack open. And I was like, hey man, that's mine. And his face went red and he said, oh, <laughs> kind of chuckled. Um, and then I got it back. I literally like put it down for 15 seconds, just to like walk, you know, a few feet forward and get that shot. So what do you know? <laughs> wow. Ah, a day in the life. Day in the life here in Mexico. He says uh, 30, right? Yes, yes. Ah, perfect. Put it here. Yes, yes. Thank you. 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 Thank there's another uh, Colectivo that's going to take me back to La Punta, so see you next time. <laughs> I got caught up uh, <laughs> talking to a stranger on the Colectivo, so I missed my spot <laughs> by 25 minutes. <laughs> I blew right past it, so. Well, now I get to walk down these uh, random streets and see what I find.